What's up guys, Jacob here and today I thought we'll build a race quad from the bottom up. Now if you're interested in building one yourself, you should check out our other video first about choosing the right components. Now if you want to use the same components as I did in this build, you can just check the link in the description below. So I start by assembling the bottom half of the frame. This should always be the first step when building a race quad. This will be the ground for everything else later on. This step is really simple, I just follow the instructions that came with the frame. Make sure to add Loctite to all the screws that doesn't have nylock bolts, otherwise they will most likely fall off during flight. On the screws I'm attaching now I don't really need to worry about that because all of these screws are attached with nylock bolts. So, at this point I have assembled the bottom half of the frame and it's time to start adding other components. I'll start by adding the motors. Notice that there are two kinds of motors, the one with the silver top and the one with the black. That tells us which way the threading is threaded. And it's important that you get it right. The motors should spin like this. So make sure that the motors are correct. At this step it's very important to add Loctite. I used my old screws for my old build, so I didn't need to add more. Now that we've attached the motors, we can attach the flight controller. So here I have the CC3D board. This is a very old and really bad flight controller to be honest, but it was the one I had at the moment, so it's one I'll be installing. Make sure that the USB port is facing a direction where you can easily access it. For me it's on the side. It's easy to orient the board in the software later. Then I'll just go ahead and attach the receiver to the PPM port of the flight controller. If your receiver supports it, you can go ahead and use SBUS instead, which is newer and a completely digital signal. So now it's time to start soldering. I'll start with my ESCs. If you haven't already, I would definitely recommend removing the insulation around the pads where you connect the motor, since you can have a much cleaner setup then. Just cut the wires to the correct length, strip them and then you can start soldering. It's good if you attach some solder to the pads before you start soldering the wire on, that way it will be easier to solder it. Also, remember to pre-tin the wires on the ESC. Also, keep in mind the polarization of the pads. I'm sorry about the lack of footage here, but as you can see, you just attach the ESCs to the PDP, and then just take the motor wires, cut them to length, and attach them as well. It doesn't matter which order you put the wires from the motors, if you're running BLA EC, since then you can just change it later in the software. Right now I'm just test fitting the cord that comes with the FBV transmitter. It has a red voltage in which I'll just connect to the PDB and of course a ground that will go to the PDB as well. That way my FBV transmitter gets power. So this is what the flight controller looks like up close and it's now time to attach the ESCs. Now you see this area in the bottom part that's where you connect the DECs. The bottom part is minus, then we have the plus strip for plus 5 volts, and then lastly we have the signal rope, that's the top one. You can see that the signal pins are labeled 1 to 6 and different pins need different motor inputs. As of making this video, this is the input order which CleanFlight and Betaflight uses. With that out of the way, we can start to attach the ESCs to the flight controller. My ESCs do not have a built-in BEC, therefore they have only two wires and no plus 5 volts. That's okay, we'll just connect the ground to the ground and then the other wire which is the signal to the signal. Then we'll just need to add a voltage regulator to power the flight controller instead. At this point I'm just soldering on the wires to the flight controller. But it can be a bit difficult and if you do not have that much soldering experience I would definitely recommend just using the pin header that came with it. But it's mostly a matter of personal preference. I like this way because then it's a much cleaner and smaller setup. 
If you have a multimeter, make sure to use it to check if the pads are connected, since the plus and minus should never be connected. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Now I'll just take my multimeter and make sure that none of the signal pins are connected and that all of the plus are connected and all of the negatives are connected together. I'll also check at the XT60 connector on the board. As I talked about earlier, my ECs do not have a 5 volt output, therefore I will need to use this 5 volt voltage regulator and connect it to the pin header. I just connect the voltage in and ground directly to the PDB. To attach it to the frame I just used some super glue. And then I use the 5 volt out and connect that to the flight controller. After double and triple checking all the wires and connections, I was finally ready to attach the battery. At this point we should see the CC3D lighting up. And it's a success, no magic smoke needed. After that I just checked that the voltage regulator was giving out 5 volts. Now if you're gonna measure while having the battery connected, then make sure that you're absolutely certain that you know what you're doing. Now it's time to add the FBV setup. I went with the black Runcam Swift and the Bosscam TS832. I also designed and 3D printed a holder for the FBV transmitter that attaches to the flight controller screws. If you want one, you can check it out at my Thingiverse page, link in the description below. Then I went ahead and attached the cable that we prepared before, and also screwed on the FBV antenna. Now I like having the FBV transmitter this far into the quad, because that means that the antenna is very well protected, and it basically never breaks. Then I just attached the FBV camera with the included mount, then I just connected the wires going from the camera to the transmitter, the video signal being the yellow one to the yellow one on the transmitter, power to the power out on the transmitter, and then ground to ground. At this point of the build, the quad should look something like this. I have this capacitor to even out the voltage, and it's not really necessary unless you use the active braking. Now it's time to assemble the rest of the frame by adding the standoffs. Remember to use Loctite here. Then I like to add some electrical tape over the ESCs as protection. Some people prefer heat shrink, but I prefer tape since it's easier to add and remove. As the final step I'll just add a voltage alarm, the battery and battery strap, and some props. Now once again it's very important that you put the right props on the right motor as we discussed the spinning direction before. Lastly I just remixed the camera holder I found on Thingiverse and 3D printed it. I've also designed a newer similar mount to this for the Eken H9 that uses the screws on the Martian frame exactly like this one. You can find it on my Thingiverse page. Just make sure the CG is in the middle and that is it. The quad is done. So you've made it to the end of this video and I thought I would include some flight footage at least. Now we'll have another video on actually tuning and setting up your quad in the Vita Flight software so stay tuned for that because that's of course a big part of getting your quad ready. In the meantime just enjoy this flight and I'll see you in the next video.
decrypt. Otherwise, you might blow up your quad or battery. To prevent this, just make sure you locate the red wire from the battery. Make sure you connect that to the red wire from the transmitter. Okay, so now it's time to test the camera.